Hey everybody, it's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my channel. Hope you like this video. We're going to talk about the 2018 Sailing Regions of the World. Where are cruisers going around the world? What regions? And uh, well, let's take a look at what we got here. I mean, 30 million passengers are going to be on cruise ships in 2019. 27 million were on passenger ships uh, already for... <laughs> 2018. We're almost finished 2018 with all the bookings that have been pre-made. There are 386 cruise ships in the world right now. $40 billion in revenue for this industry and cruise ships go everywhere on this planet. It is absolutely amazing. The uh, the uh, business is booming, uh, growing at 5 to 7% a year and uh, I'll tell you, it's becoming the popular thing to do. Uh, if you haven't tried a cruise, you should try it. By the way, you can catch me Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, live. Uh, also, Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, live. We talk about cruise ships and cruise ship vacations every day on my YouTube channel. Just pop on by and say hi. T Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, you can catch me live. We have evening trivia, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. We have live trivia. Lots of fun. All right. Let's talk about the number one region uh, in the world for cruising today. It has to be, guess what, surprise, surprise, it's the Caribbean. The Caribbean is the number one territory in the world for most cruisers. 38.4% of all cruise ship passengers go on a cruise in the Caribbean every year. Here's a shot of the Miami terminal. Look at how big it is with six, seven ships at a time. Five million passengers a year coming in and out of here a year. Here is the uh, Port Everglades at Fort Lauderdale. That's their terminal. Huge bunch of ships at a time, seven, eight at a time. And that's why the Caribbean is the number one place to go. Here's a shot of the Cayman Islands. You're coming back to your ship. Here's one. There's a second one waiting for you. There's a third one. There's a fourth one back tucked in behind there. It's not uncommon for seven cruise ships at a time to be in the Caymans uh, on any one day. And with an average of 3,500 passengers per ship now, think about that, upwards of 20 plus thousand people a day visiting the Cayman Islands. You could go to a private island like this, Labadee and Haiti with Royal Caribbean and enjoy yourself. This is becoming a popular thing for cruise ships to do. Private islands, private resorts for the passengers to go to with full security, all the amenities. The second region that is uh, dominating the world, 15%, Asia Pacific. Here's a shot of Hong Kong. This area for, for China, Japan, um, South Korea, Bali. This is an area that is growing quickly in popularity. Although lately there's been a bit of uh, an issue with regard to Chinese uh, um, uh, deals being made and uh, availability, accessibility. So some of the North American cruise lines have been pulling back a little bit but new cruise lines are coming into China and Asia for the business. This is an area that will continue to grow dramatically. The third area uh, traditionally has been uh, one of the most popular, the Mediterranean. 14.2% of travelers love to cruise in the Mediterranean for 2018. 14.2% went here. Here's Venice, uh, beautiful ports. The beautiful thing about sailing in the Mediterranean, one of the real handy things when you go to a place like this here, Cadiz in Spain, you're dropped off right downtown. The cruise ship is practically downtown in most spots. Not Rome, however. You got to be, uh, got to get off about 80 kilometers away and take a bus right in. But you take a ship tour and they take you on a bus right next door to this building right here. It's fantastic. And then you can explore the city of Rome either on your own or with a group. You take a train in, take a train out. But most uh, ports of call in the Mediterranean, you are literally right downtown. Look at these guys, three ships right in the core. You can literally walk off the pier and the port and just explore the city yourself. It's absolutely wonderful. Marseille, France, look at that. Uh, gorgeous views. The Mediterranean in the uh, in the, uh, the Riviera, the <laughs> Riviera and Mediterranean, beautiful. All right, the next area is Northern Europe, British Isles, Norway, Iceland. This includes uh, the port nearest Paris. This is 9.4% of the business, so about uh, not quite 3 million passengers a year on cruise ships are coming to Dublin, Ireland, like this is the shot here, or they're coming to uh, Liverpool in England. Uh, there's, they're catching Cork, they're ca going to, to uh, Belfast, they're going to uh, all kinds of places. Uh, here's another shot of 
Edinburgh. There's a beautiful place to, to spend the day. This, the British Isles, Iceland is another region. This whole region uh, encompasses almost nine, well, 9.4 percent of the uh, cruise business is up in this region. The uh, next one, Alaska. Alaska catches 4 percent of the cruise market and it's still growing. Uh, and here's why. Look at these views of these glaciers. Uh, these cruise ships can come right into these ports and get right up there. And you can watch these uh, these incredible views. Take a train ride into Skagway. What incredible photography. Uh, you have opportunity to take photos like you can't believe. The other area with a 4% share of the market is Australia, New Zealand. And why not? Look at this. There's the famous opera house there on the bottom right. Here's another shot of the Sydney Bridge, the opera house. 4% of the market, 1.2 million passengers are doing Australia. That includes obviously Sydney, Melbourne. Here's Melbourne. Beautiful, beautiful places. That gives you, that gives you an idea right there. 3.3% of the market is uh, for the U.S. West Coast and Mexican cruises, the Mexican Riviera. So you can take a cruise right here to a place like Mazatlan, where I was one day. Get yourself downtown by a little shuttle bus and walk through the downtown core. There's the ship. I'm standing on top of the Best Western Hotel right on the roof, taking a shot here of Mazatlan, Old Town Mazatlan. I see the cathedral there just behind that light pole, so I decided to walk around a bit here, zoom in on my shaky little camera, grab a shot of, uh, of that uh, cathedral. Just beautiful. Uh, sorry for shaky, but... Uh, you see what I'm talking about? It's beautiful. The weather is great. A lot of Americans and Canadians love to head to the West Coast, grab a cruise ship, and head down to Mexico. Fantastic. The next area that is is important, 2% uh, for South America, 2% for the Canary Islands, 1.4% for transatlantic cruises, and 1.3% for Bermuda cruises. Then we have an area for uh, Canada and New England. Uh, in the fall every year, it's quite popular for uh, transatlantic cruises to come on over to the St. Lawrence Seaway and head to uh, a place like this right here, Quebec City on the St. Lawrence Seaway, or come on into uh, downtown Montreal and catch the fall colors, the late summer views, absolutely gorgeous. And then coming out of uh, St. Lawrence, you're into Halifax, Boston, end up in New York, absolutely wonderful. There's a bunch of cruises that run from New York up to uh, Canada here. 1.2% of the market, or about uh, 3 million or so passengers a year, are taking advantage of the uh, Canada New England cruises. There's the Indian Ocean cruising area that's expanding. There's Hawaii at 0.9%, uh, just about uh, 2.6 um, 2 million people a year cruise either to Hawaii or they cruise around Hawaii on Pride of America with uh, the uh, Norwegian uh, ship. Panama Canal cruises, of course, are popular, but only 0.4 of 1%, just about one half of 1% of all cruisers take Panama Canal cruises. This is a bucket list item for a lot of people. And at this point, about one and a half million a year, take advantage of it. Africa also 0.4%, uh, USA domestic waterways 0.3%, that would be up the Mississippi River. Antarctic cruises and world cruises. World cruises, if you take a cruise around the world, you are in select company. 0.1% of all cruisers go on a world cruise. So it's not even 1%, it's one tenth of 1%. Uh, it's expensive, and that's why, and another reason it, uh, there's so few doing it, it takes quite some time to go around the world. You might be on a ship for 100, 120 days or longer, but you get views like this, uh, not too bad, kind of nice to look at. There you go, the popular regions of the world to go sailing on. Thanks for joining me today. Join me Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern, uh, for live cruise ship talk, also on Saturdays at 2. And I look forward to having you come by. Please subscribe to my channel and come on by. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.